Hello and welcome to the channel. Beautiful stunning day, if it's your first time. My name's Simon, and this is a Volkswagen T4. Now, this is my uh, trusty old service van. I bought it cheap, I did a lot of welding, fixed it up, got it going. And I ain't had a day's problem with it. So uh, after fitting the door in the last video, I drove it 0.5 of a kilometre back into the yard. And uh, just about when I got there, it shut off right, and rolled to where it is now. Odd. Why would it do that? Now, my thing about diesels is uh, the only reason it stopped running is because it ran out of diesel. Anyway, with these more modern ones, it's not exactly modern, but they have fuel shut off things. Anyway, so it stopped. So I turned the key and the engine was turning over like it was, you know, turning over, but nowhere near going to start. And then there was a clank, just like the engine locking up. Anyway, then I walked away from it. So a clank like the engine locking up. Well, you know, there's a few of you that said, oh, it's a battery or alternator or, yeah, that's all assuming, of course. I'm an idiot, or I don't know what I'm talking about, or I've got no experience. All of those things are not true. I've got extensive experience with vehicles. More than you'd ever know. And that sounded like the engine locked up. Anyway, hopefully it hasn't. And why would it? But that's what it sounded like. So what did I do? Well, I attached a strop to it. Now, my Sarah, she ain't the best person at towing, but we ain't got to go very fast, so I just want to make sure the engines are not locked up. So I charged the battery, put that on the back of the Toyota, went round the yard real quick. First couple of times I lifted up the clutch, just stopped her dead, just stopped. Absolutely stopped her dead. So I was like, well, that's not working. I'll put it in full. The engine's locked up. Just stops the car dead. So we've towed it back here. Now I'm gonna put a wrench on the bottom crank just to absolutely make sure the engine's locked up. And the reason I need to absolutely make sure the engine's locked up is um, there was no reason for it to lock up. It's just out of service with all the filters. Right, it's always run right, it's always run nice. And um, it didn't make any rat rattles or bangs or clanks or and uh, we were just ticking over, pulling in the yard, nice and slow. Do they? But I suspect I've got a bar and a nut, and now I've got another bar. I suspect when I put it on that crank, that ain't gonna turn. You know, I can't. I can't even tell you why one of these engines would lock up like that, especially as we were just about to stop. I keep saying locked up. I think it is C solid. That's what I think. So anyway, let's see. Oh, I don't even need to check this. I've only just done it. It's had all new filters, new oils, new fluids. Had everything just for the winter. Right, and during the winter, it's been parked up under the canopy, under there, doing nothing. So uh, it's probably done 150 kilometers since its service. Maybe, only drive it round the village. Alright, let's get under here. Oh. Oh. There we go. Bar and socket on the bottom there. I think it's going to undo that nut before it moves anything. I hope I'm wrong. That's solid. The engine is completely locked up. Is there any even signs of it giving? Why would that happen? It has done a lot of miles, but you'd expect something was gonna... No, you should be able to turn that. <sighs> so the engine is locked solid, the starter motor, well, that is jammed into the floor. Well, obviously, that's what the clank was. 
Why? Why has that happened? Let's bang on the start motor. See if we can free that. So being quite sure this is locked up. What I should do is walk away from it. <sighs> I can't. Anyway, if you ain't familiar with what's under the bonnet in one of these, now it's a big pile of turd squeezed into the smallest hole possible. All right, just, everything's just, <sighs> just can't. Anyway, so what I've decided to do is take the start motor out. Right, why? Well, having done some research on these engines, right, well, ain't common, uncommon for them to log up valves, it pistons, they get hydrolocked because the head gasket's gone, blah, 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 blah. That's not what happened. The first thing that happened was it stopped running by itself. Right. The second thing that happened was I tried to restart it. All at this point, the engine was turning fine. Then I hear a clunk and then it all stops. So the last thing that was working was the starter motor. So after a lot of fiddling around, I've undone the bolts of the starter motor. All right, it must just come out the hole. That was in there. And I've left it connected, I've left the, the wiring connected, hoping I can get it out the hole. So I can test the starter motor. Right, that's out. So, if I'm right, that was jammed in there. Right, that's still touching ass now. If we get back up and reconnect the battery, that was me back. Well, I had a lot of rest on it last few days. Surprisingly, it's not bad. I probably shouldn't have said that. I probably shouldn't have said that at all. Right. So if we move this mess out of the way, right, reconnect that. Look at this lot I have to deal with. I don't even know they get that battery in there. Now, if we go in here, hopefully we can hear the starter spin. Nothing. Nothing at all. Right, that's interesting. That is interesting. Right, so I wonder if we put a bar on that bottom crank, whether that'll turn over, and whether we've had a catastrophic starter motor failure, which has jammed it all up. Yeah, and that's kind of what I was wondering. Let me go and get a bar and a big socket. Oh, I should have bought out another Amazon box. down there. See if this wants to move now. There you go. Look at that. Right. That's interesting. Right, so the engine's now unlocked. But the starter motor don't turn freely, and the starter motor failing didn't stop the engine running in the first place. So I don't know how many coincidental problems we've had all at the same time. <coughs> However, what I do know is the starter motor is US, and the engine don't run. But it does turn now. So that's unseized that, all right? So the next thing to do is get that starter motor out of there. We're disconnected from the wiring. Well, that's not what I wanted to find at all.
times. Comes out. Ah. All right. Can't imagine there's too much wrong with that. Do we see any damage in there? No. Hmm. Okay. Right, so if you don't see any damage in there, and that's working. What's, what's happened there then? Let's go and see what's going on with the starter motor. Granted, not the best sounding start motor in the world, but there ain't nothing wrong with it. So, there's nothing wrong with that. And now the engine's not seized. No damage on the flywheel. Hmm. Well, one of them. So, even if that was stuck out, there's nothing to stop it from going round, is there? So, it stopped running because a valve let go, or a rod, or something let go somewhere. So, that jammed the starter motor into the flywheel. So we can turn this this way until we get to there there we go that's the piston in the valve that way so we go the other way. We have to do a full revolution. All that compression and all that. All the way around. There you go. Let's see you get to there. And you'll hear it. That's it. Engine's done. Terminated. Finitoed. We just had to get the. We had to discover that. Ooh. We had to get the starter motor out because obviously that was jammed it, jammed it in a one-way mode, so that we could. Spin the engine in both directions, which we've now done. So that's a valve, spring, something in the top end, and something's dropped down, the valve's dropped down, and um, it topped the piston, so that's it. So it stopped running, obviously, because the valve fell out. And then um, that was that, done. So, terminated. But at least we know now, I had to know, Yeah, and I saw it was, I thought it was locked up. It was just made that sound. Um, but then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, you know, the new exhaust I'd just put on it and all the other bits and pieces, I thought, well, I've got to try. Anyway, tried, failed, that's it. Finished. And that's just nuts, really. So, uh, yeah. That's the end of that. Well, 
Unfortunately, that didn't last long enough for me to make it worthwhile. So I didn't get my money's worth out of that one. Which is interesting, I was just saying earlier, I've owned hundreds. Could I go into the thousands? No, I'm not sure. Many hundreds of vehicles, and uh, but a handful ever went to the scrapyard. But a handful. Yeah. Right, well. No more to be said on that subject. I've got a couple of jobs to do today. First one is my van. We're going to further investigate that and uh, see what we find there because I'm pretty sure I'm going to find a seized engine one way or another. And then, after we've done that, we're going to go down to the boat ramp where the boats are launched and trim that back. I had a hell of a job getting my boat in there. And not because I did it in a traditional way, you know, on a trailer, backing it down. No, it's because I had it across ways or on the tractor. That's a good job done. I'm happy with that. It's nice and wide. I just think everybody would be happy with that. I've got a lot more to do along the front, but um, I'm only giving my back a couple of hours on the chainsaw like that. So if you like the content, don't forget, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, don't do any harm, don't cost you anything, helps me out, and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.